Today I'm going to be showing you guys five different ways to do keyword research. So all five are going to be completely for free. I'm going to show you exactly how to find pages that your competitors are ranking for, how to actually plan out those pages, and also how to um, group keywords together as well. Also, all five methods are completely free. You can pick and choose which ones you want to use. Maybe you want to use one method or maybe you want to use all five methods as well. Not only that as well as we are doing daily SEO videos, so hit, remember to hit like and also subscribe. If you haven't already, download the My SEO um, app. It's literally the URL, myseo.app. It's completely free. Right now, as of recording this, it is only out on iOS. If you're watching this video later on, it might be out on Android as well. We should be live on, um, on Android for the 15th. So method number one I'm going to show you guys is Google's own keyword planner. Now, typically speaking, people use this for PPC, like paid ads. However, there is definitely a use case for this when it comes to um, SEO as well. So if you haven't already, you can literally just search Google keyword planner, click the, uh, I think it was the first link. Yeah, the first link after the sponsored and just click on start. Now you do not need to um, add like a, or sorry, you might need to add a credit card, but you you do not need to pay a single penny. Like I've not spent anything on this actual account. So then what we can actually do is we can discover new keywords or we can actually get search volumes and forecasts as well. So for example here, I'm just gonna plug in Ahrefs into here. So discover new keywords and we can actually just paste in a um, URL and it's going to get us the actual results. You also need to click on start with a website. So we can specifically look at the entire site, which I'll show you in just a second. You can also filter out different geos or you can look at a specific page. So if I click on get results first, this is going to take a look at the entire website. So as you can see here, it's went and done its thing. It probably took maybe five seconds. Um, and as you can see, they are ranking for Keyword Planner, they're ranking for free keyword research tool, which is quite funny because that's what we're doing a video on. Um, but the, the one issue you do have with this strategy is it doesn't group together keywords. So what I like to do here is you can actually export these keywords into like a Google Sheet, and then you can actually move those into ChatGPT or Gemini, for example, and you can actually get it to group some of these keywords together. When you're doing keyword research, it's really important that um, you don't create a page for all of these keywords, like free keyword research tool and keyword research tool. There's a bit of overlap there. So you might only just need one page for that. Now, if we take a look at zapier.com, this page specifically, right? What we can actually do is if we go back to the keyword planner and click on discover new keywords and start with a website and then select use only this page. This is a good way of figuring out which keywords specifically a page ranks for. So as you can see here, we've got a load of keywords, best SEO tools, SEO tools, SEO software tools, SEO optimization tools, SEO software. This is what I was kind of saying before where one page might end up ranking for 200, 300 keywords. Um, or in some cases, if you're in local, for example, it might be a little bit less. Like if we take a look at an accountancy firm, if we do accountants in Wigan, for example. And if we take a look at these guys, again, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste these guys into here and select use only this page. And again, it's going to probably take maybe five or six seconds took even less than that. As you can see, this is all of the keywords that that page is actually ranking for, which is pretty insane because it's only one page, but that's the that's the beauty of SEO. Once you start ranking for one keyword, you end up ranking for a handful of keywords. Now, another section on this is you can actually get search volume forecasts as well. So if I just search like accountants London, for example, you can actually double check to see if certain keywords are actually getting searches. So as you can see, average searches per month, it's 1,000 to 10,000 searches. Now, if we take a look at Accountants London and Ahrefs, I'm just gonna do like a side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see here, we've got like 1,500 um, traffic potential. We've got about 900 searches. Now, usually Ahrefs is a little bit um, 
lower than what is actually um, being displayed. So if you were to actually rank for Accountants London, um, you would probably get a little bit more than 900 searches. Not only that as well, this is given like a range. So in that sense, it might be a little bit more accurate and specifically for this, um, for this actual example. So method number two for keyword research is taking a look at your competitor's website. This is probably one of my favorite ways looking at their sitemap. So if you don't know what a sitemap is, if you do forward slash sitemap.xml, there's a few different ways that you can obviously get it. Um, you'll be shown like a file like this. It's pretty ugly. I won't lie. Um, if you are struggling to find the sitemap, you can do forward slash robots.txt on pretty much any website and it should show you the URL for the sitemap. So this is the sitemap here. <clears throat> and basically for, for anybody that doesn't know what a sitemap is, is it, it's the page that Google's crawler or Google's robot goes to when it's trying to figure out which pages you actually have on your website. Now, what we can do from this is we can actually do a reverse competitor analysis and figure out exactly which pages these guys have that we don't on our website. So this is the prompt that I've used. All I've done is I've just copied this into ChatGBT and I've said, can you give me a list of SEO pages that we should have on our website for, from my competitor's sitemap? Can you also remove stuff like about pages, privacy, contact, etc.? We're going to hit go. You can also use this prompt in ChatGBT, but what I found is when you're doing longer tasks, Claude does definitely excel um, at certain stuff like this. ChatGBT kind of sometimes struggles. Right, this is pretty funny because I literally just said Claude doesn't struggle with long tasks. And as you can see, it's taken a little bit longer than expected. So we've went over to ChatGBT and as you can see, we have got all of the actual pages that we need. So dental implants, emergency dentist, kid-friendly dentist, teeth whitening, dental checkup. Then we've got like some educational blog content as well. So we've got four general dentistry myths, a guide to de general dentistry services, common procedures in cosmetic dentistry. We've got a load of different pages. We know exactly what is working for our competitors. That's when we would basically start producing our own content. One thing about this method as well is I wouldn't just blindly copy our competitor, right? <clears throat> like obviously we've got maybe 14 different services here and we've probably got let's say 20, 20 eh, maybe, maybe like 30 blog content pieces now i would take a look and see if there's anything that i can actually create this better so you don't want to just blindly copy and paste you want to create something that's actually better for um, your website's visitors as well method number three is by taking a look at sites like reddit for example and you can actually find questions that people are asking. So for example, if we were to do, let's say, um, teeth whitening, right? So we've got a lot of different um, questions that people are asking. One thing that I would also take a look at is seeing how active some of these questions are. Like for example, we've got 30 comments in eight months. That's pretty reasonable. In some cases you do get um, some questions on Reddit that um, are, just not that active. So in this case, we would have like, what are good teeth whitening solutions, right? And then we would create a blog content saying you could do like a homemade recipe. Um, you could um, use experts such as our dentist, dental practice, for example. So you, you that's, that's basically what you would want to do. Um, you could then also do this for like any industry or any subtopic that you're also talking about. So for example, we've got site colon reddit.com and then you've got cosmetic dentistry. Um, and then you've got oh, like, for example, cosmetic versus general dentistry. So if we take a look at this, so if we take a look, if I just search cosmetic versus general dentistry, you'll see that these guys have done a very similar approach. They've got blog content here talking about the topic in detail. And as you can see here, like this, a lot of people are actually doing a very similar strategy. So you know that if it's working for them, it's going to work for you as well. Another bonus tip that you can also do is you can actually use this exact same scenario for 
um, Quora as well. So you could do site colon um, Quora.com and then your actual keyword here. And then you've got all of the questions here as well. One thing that I would always recommend doing when you're using this scenario or when you're using this keyword research method is do a quick Google search to see what um, what is actually ranking. So for example, how to choose a good cosmetic dentist in the UK, I would actually search this to see if there are other dentists going after that keyword. As you can see here, we've got a dental practice in Preston, um, which is going after that keyword and there's other dentists as well, for example. Method number four is by taking a look at your own website. Now, if we take a look here, right, all I've done is I've went into Google Search Console and I've put in what you can do, what, how, why, where, um, how, um, and it will basically tell you which keywords that you are actually showing up for and you're getting low amounts of clicks. So for example, in here, I would potentially look at doing a dedicated page on what is keyword clustering. Then we could even do a dedicated page on what are SEO topical maps, right? One thing you want to make certain that you do and you make certain that you aren't um, creating too many pages because that's when you actually get keyword cannibalization is if we take a look at this one, what is keyword clustering and what is keyword cluster and what is keyword grouping and what is a keyword cluster? That's all just one page, right? So you want to make certain if you are going after this method, you are... Um, not you're not creating like multiple different pages for each of these keywords because in some cases there will be a little bit of overlap the last way that you can do keyword research and this is probably like one of the best ways as well is the google keyword um drop down or the some people call it the google alphabet soup method and that is when you search for a keyword and then you put a modifier so we want to do web or if we wanted to have a web design company we might actually do this method where we put in web design for, and we can do web design for A, and then this could be web design for artists, web design for AI, web design for agencies, web design for apps. These would all be dedicated pages. Then we could swap over to B, for example. So you've got web design for um, businesses, web design for, there's not many Bs there. Then you've got C, web design for construction company, churches, contractors, company, construction. So con contractors and construction or con construction and construction company might be the same um, page. Web design for cheap, college, etc. You could do this for any industry as well. So this is like accountants for. So you've got accountants for actors, offers, um, artists, associates, assets. Then we could go over to B. So we've got accountants for barristers, businesses, buy to let landlords. The list just keeps going on and on. Same goes with lawyers. So lawyers for animals, asylum seekers, autistic adults, Angela Rayner, etc. So that has been five different ways that you can do keyword research. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and also comment down below. If you want to work with me, head over to casualdash.com. And if you want to get the app, head over to myseo.app. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.